Kyla here, and today I'm gonna be a piece of complete and utter human garbage. My uncle had these slabs of ash from an ash tree that came down in a friend's yard, and this particular one is not wide enough to get a full paddle blade out of. Um, so I was like, you know, it'd be really funny because it's live edge if I made a river paddle. Like, a river river paddle. Okay, so to give you an example of the difference between a river paddle and a normal paddle, this is my aunt's normal paddle. It's in for a little bit of maintenance for the summer season right now, but you can see it is well proportioned. You know, it has a normal sized shaft and then a beautiful normal sized blade. But you can imagine in a river where you only have this much depth, you wanna take this blade basically and make it sideways. And that's so you have more blade area pulling on the water without hitting the bottom of the riverbed. I think also concurrently I will be building two real paddles. So if you want actual quality content where you might learn something and have a DIY project to do yourself, hit the subscribe button so that next week you get notified for a video on how to actually build a paddle. Yeah. Okay. So have you clicked that subscribe button yet? Cause Let's just start building this thing. Cool. Yeah! All right, step one is to draw the shape of the paddle out onto the rough slab. And I'm not even gonna bother planing this because we don't have a thickness planer and it's all gonna get planed to a weird shape in the end anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it stained as is. Step two is to get safe before we use any power tools. Now we're ready for step three. Step three is to use said power tools and cut out the shape of the paddle, or at least half of it. Step 3.5 is to secretly bust out some moves. And then once the dance gods have been satisfied, of course, you can resume jigsaw. Don't this look like a canoe paddle? Okay, but this part does. So now I've got this like really uneven paddle and I need to cut this piece. And what I'm gonna do is leave this all square so that it's easier to make a mold for the epoxy and then do the rest of the shaping once the epoxy has been set. So I think step one is to clean off the bark and see what kind of live edge we're looking at. All right, so the paddle looks like this right now, and I genuinely can't figure out if I wanna leave the river sort of wide like this, but these are so steep, I don't know if I like it, or if I wanna make them more parallel like that, which would make the two sides of the paddle more symmetrical. So, since I can't decide, I put it on my Instagram stories, I'm gonna wait a few hours and see what people say. And in the meantime, I realized that I don't have any blue pigment, and I also don't wanna wait like a couple days for a online delivery, but I also don't want to drive an hour to the closest Michaels or Walmart to get mica powder. So what I'm gonna do is go to my local drugstore and see if they have any cheap blue eyeshadow and then smash it up. So while I'm waiting on this Instagram poll, let's take a field trip. Luckily though, I did remember to seal the live edge with epoxy before I left. And that way when we go to do the big pour, it will already be sealed so there won't be air bubbles. All right, so we are at Kitty, and let's see what they have. Eyeshadows. What? Wait. There's no blues, no bright blues. Come on, don't do this to me. Look at this. Every color but blue. Why is there no blue there? This would be perfect. Look, those are only 99 cents, but there's no blue. All May seems to have heard of it. This might be my best bet. Y'all, this is booming downtown Addison, Vermont. Right here. Look at that. Oh, we're through it. That's it. All right, so Instagram has spoken and they've chosen parallel, not wide. If you disagree with that, you can go follow me on Instagram and then you'll have influence over the next, the next voting decision. But for this project, we're gonna listen to the people and I'm gonna cut this off right there and then we're gonna pour. 
Okay, so for some reason, I got lazy or like, I don't even know what I was thinking, but I decided to see if I could make a mold out of masking tape like you're seeing here. And let me tell you, this does not work. Like I've done similar on really tiny wormholes and stuff. So I was like, oh, maybe it'll work on a large scale. No, no, no. But you'll see that in a second. So to get the blue pigment, I just gently scraped the top of the eyeshadow and kind of like created that fine powder. And then I mixed it into my thick set epoxy. <laughs> And the eyeshadow thing works pretty well, even if this part did not. <laughs> and you may be looking at this and thinking, hey, that doesn't look so bad, but uh, wait till you see it tomorrow morning. So I cleaned up the epoxy mess and used a more traditional approach of a lot of packing tape, silicone putty, and hot glue and clamps, and that worked a little bit better. I still got some leakage that I had to go in and fix with hot glue later, but in the end, I did get a successful pour. So once it was cured, it was just a matter of pulling it off of its mold. And as you can see, I did have a lot of issues with the epoxy leaking out and gluing scrap wood that I had like put in place to level things to it, um, but nothing a hammer can't fix. <laughs> so this turned out disgusting, but it's workable. So it looks like the silicone had gone bad and it never, ugh, it never set. It was supposed to set in 30 minutes and it just never did. And I think that's part of why it leaked. And it looks like it like reacted with the epoxy down at the bottom here. So it's like got the consistency of a sponge. So I'm trying to figure out how to clean it up so that I can cut it and, and plane it without like destroying all the tools. And with that in mind, I decided to procrastinate on the cleaning it up and jigsaw a rough outline so that in theory, there would be less to clean up, but really I just didn't want to solve the problem right away. <laughs> And then I decided I was gonna take that procrastination a step further and plane one of the sides down to give it a nice smooth finish so that when I got really sad when I was working on the other side, I could flip it over and look at my pretty side. <laughs> but maybe that was a good move because while I was planning, I had a stroke of genius. And I remembered that when I was doing high school theater, whenever a freshman would kick over a can of paint, we would use sawdust to absorb the paint, like rub the sawdust in, and, and then we could sweep the sawdust up and that would remove most of the paint. So I decided to try that with this silicone mess. I rubbed a bunch of sawdust into the like weird crevices that were left by whatever silicone epoxy thing happened. And that actually worked really well. The sawdust absorbed a lot of the silicone and then I was able to just pick it out and throw it away. <laughs> And then once it was mostly clean and silicone goop free, I was able to take the power planer to it and get that side really nice. And then it was like the mistake never happened. And now with more workable faces, I was able to do the final shaping of the blade. So that meant jigsawing it and then power planing it some more and then kind of going in for finishing touches with a hand plane. To make the shaft round, I just went in with a roundover bit on the table router set to like half of the height of the wood that I'm using. And so that gets it mostly round and then the rest can kind of be done with hand planing or sanding depending on how close to round you really need it to get. With all the blade related shaping done, it was time to move on to sanding. So this is probably 80 grit, although admittedly I don't remember. And then I did go in and sort of shape the angles of the corners a little bit more with a Dremel, just because the Dremel is so much easier to get into those inside curves. And then once I was done with that, I took the sander to the entire paddle. Now I didn't put a huge amount of effort into making this grip really comfortable because this is definitely more of a design paddle rather than a paddling paddle just because the epoxy river makes honestly no sense in a paddle. Um, if you want to learn how to make a more comfortable grip, that'll be in next week's video on how to make an actually paddleable paddle. But I just used a flap disc on a drill and got a close enough aesthetic shape. And once it was fully sanded, it's time for varnish. And because the first coat is going directly onto bare wood, I do thin the varnish down a little bit. That's generally best practice, although everyone has kind of their own way of varnishing. It's like a voodoo witch cult 
But anyway, I am varnishing going all in one direction and then I'll kind of cross hatch it going in the other direction to make sure that I'm getting every single spot of wood, that nothing is missing. And then I will uh, go back in the direction that I first went and that's, you know, like how I get my full coat of varnish. And then I'll do that over the whole paddle. Many thanks to Total Boat for providing all of the epoxy and varnish used in this video. You can use my code TOTALZYLA at checkout for 15% off of all Total Boat products. If you like this video, please do not hesitate to click the subscribe button and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Xylofoxlane. See you next time.